good. So then I'll do an intro. Hopefully I get our, the show name is what again? It's eBay Fake Sellers. eBay Fake Sellers or <laughs> AMZ Seller Real Talk, right? That's the name of our show? Never heard of it. Good. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another, oh, whatever, another episode of AMZ Seller Real Talk. Uh, my name is Curtis Johnson. Uh, I am the president of Managed by Stats, and with me is the ever-elusive Justin <laughs> Danen Coleman. And again, I'm not elusive. I'm always here. My wife he's is always the elusive here. We just one don't now. really know who he is anymore. <laughs> um, but no, we generally are graced by the presence of his wife, except for the last couple of days. You know, let's just face it. You guys, uh, baby's got Lorelai has been in. giving you some fun. Yeah. Who's yeah. I don't. I haven't slept. Who's Lorelai? That's your daughter. Ah. Yeah. Okay. One of two. You have two kids. Two I have kids. two kids too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we have with us uh, someone who. It, you know, what's actually really cool about this is um, our guest is not very traditional in his success on Amazon. Um, his name is Dylan Frost. He is a really cool guy. I've had a couple opportunities to talk with him recently. We're going to let him tell you a little bit about his story um, and, you know, give us some good pointers, tips, etc. So uh, we'll now do the little thing. And now you guys see Dylan. Hello, Dylan. How's it going? Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey. Um, very cool. So um, we'll get into kind of like your unique success in in you know due time. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of you know how how you started in Amazon. I think that that's also a very cool unique story. So yep. I'll uh, I'll turn over the floor to you. Yeah. So yep, yeah, I'm Dylan. Uh, my Amazon business now has done over thirty million dollars in sales up to this point. Um, I have a business partner. His name is Dan. And we've been at this uh, quite a few years now. Uh, so I, I'll just jump right into how we got started. Yeah. Uh, about 10 years ago, I just had a regular job. Uh, so I didn't uh, I didn't go to college or anything. I, I went to community college for a little while. I did so too. That, yeah, Failed yeah. terribly. Uh, so I, I actually did so bad in high school uh, <laughs> that I couldn't have gotten into college. I couldn't afford it. Yeah. That was one thing. But yeah, if I yeah. could afford it, they wouldn't have let me in because my grades were so bad. So it was like mm. community college. Oh, or nice. Nothing. I love how the the my notice there is popping up on the screen record. Yeah. That's going to be great. I'll well, have to cut that ho out. Hopefully God. it's not the, any from your wife saying, you didn't. I know, right? Sorry, Dylan. Because uh, we're screen recording and uh, one of my email notifications just popped up. So that's going to be in the final edit. So yep. fuzz that because bad boy Because we out. don't cut. This yeah, is we don't cut. We yeah, fuzz, fuzz it out. We'll fuzz <laughs> but, it out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I ended up getting a regular day job making $40,000 uh, a year. And I thought I was rich at the time because mm. that was big money for me. Mm -hmm. um, and But uh, it's one of those things, right, where after about a, a year or two working that job, where I started out real happy, I started getting real unhappy yeah. and was looking for just any way out to, to do something different. I hated working for other people. Uh, it just wasn't really for me kind of thing. Um, but so Dan recruited me to start selling on Amazon. My, 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 he was my friend uh, for many years before we played Magic the Gathering uh, together for many years. And that's how we knew each other, card yeah. game. There we go. And now, now we're dating ourselves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we knew each other from that. And he had been having some success selling on Amazon, doing retail arbitrage, basically going into – uh, Walmarts and buying stuff on clearance and then reselling it. And he, mm -hmm. uh, he was doing a, you know, a pretty significant amount of sales doing that. And so he, he was just looking for, he, he, we knew each other, trusted each other. And he thought that I could help a lot with the business. So he recruited me to start working with him. And then, uh, and the rest was history from there. So I quit my job and became a full-time Amazon seller. Now, the thing about retail arbitrage, if anyone doesn't know what it is, it's just literally like going to a retail store, scanning things with your phone to see the price difference between the store and Amazon, and then buying the things to whether there's enough profit to be made, and then, and then you know, listing, listing them on Amazon them and, for sale. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not, not a real business. No. It's a great way to make money, but it's not how you own a, or operate a business, right? So yep. it was it was cool. We were working 60 hours a week doing that. That sucks. Uh, so it was, so it was cool. We're making money and we're working for ourselves, but there's gotta be a way that we can scale this and have a real, a big boys business. Yeah. Uh, so you sound right. like you're a big fan of arbitrage. I, I think it's a great way to, it's a, it's a great <laughs> thing for a lot of people. It was a great way to get started. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, it's not a real business. Yeah. Right? It also led to, uh, brand gating. <laughs> yes, there, there was that yeah. too. Yeah. There are a lot of a lot of issues with that. Yeah. Um, so what we decided that we were going to do to, to, to scale up and create a big boy business was start doing private label. 
Um, so, uh, you know, we, we took some private level courses online and felt like we knew what we were doing. And, and uh, we made this developed our first product. And our first product uh, wa- did extremely well. Um, we're talking like in the first two months, we did like a quarter million dollars in wow. sales. What that product yeah. was, was a, a case for uh, the Shopkins, the toy. Oh. I don't know if anyone here is recognized as Shopkins. No, but I was really hoping you were going to say cell phone case because that was my first product that bombed. <laughs> it, it sounds like something I would buy my daughter. Yes. Yeah, so okay. it's it's in the toy aisle. There is uh, this product called Shopkins where you just you just buy like little. They're just made to look like tiny grocery. Pro, like oh. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. I gotta I gotta, uh, I gotta I gotta see this here. Keep, yeah, keep going. Can, I'm gonna look can, up a picture of Shopkins so we can. It, get it blew up in like around 2015 and got super popular. So kids just you know buying these trying to collect them all kind of deal um i don't know if anthropomorphic is the right word little (laughs) groceries uh but anyway it got really really popular and we we kind of recognized that there was no good way to store these things people were buying them and collecting them but they had nowhere to put them yeah so we we designed our first private label product was a storage case for these um, and literally all it was is we've sourced a tackle box, you know, for, uh-huh. for bait, <laughs> yep. uh, for fish, you know, fishing lures and stuff. And, and then just like made it pink uh-huh. and threw a label on it uh, and called it the shopkeeper. Oh, nice. Awesome. And, uh, it just goes to show no- there's a market for anything. Yeah. Right. So because nothing like this existed and it solved the problem in the market, yep. um, Tons of people, like we, it just exploded because there was so much search traffic for Shopkins at the time. We were the only case. We were just selling through them, flying through it. And then uh, after about two or three months of that, and us real excited thinking we had done it. We had, we, you know, we're so smart. Look at us. Yeah. Sh- Shopkins made their own case, ah, like an yeah. official Bastards. license, you know, that looked way better than ours. Yeah. And they were, it was, you know, just le- like less expensive than our stupid tackle box. Yeah. And then so our sales tanked and it was just like, so it failed Yeah. Uh, pretty soon after. So that kind of blacked our eyes a little bit. And we had a bunch of inventory uh, that we had bought because it was going so well that yeah. now it was useless. So yeah. it sucks, Well, now you right? have something for the female fisher market, right? So the pink <laughs> yeah. tackle box. Uh, <laughs> all these pink tackle boxes, yeah. what to do with them, right? It, you know, it's actually kind of funny. You touched on a point that that was that we covered with Kirsty and Isaac, yeah, and that is solving a problem. Yeah, for sure. You know, what's for sure. what's the customer's problem? Because you had a wild success. Like, I haven't heard all that often. Someone that's done a quarter million dollars in sixty days from a launch. Yeah. I mean, it happens, but it's not all that regular. So, you know, solving the problem that's that's a that's a huge thing. Of course, you got punched in the nethers, right? afterwards but you know he still solved the problem at that time yeah. and then and then it was taken away from you but you know yeah gotta love that yeah yeah uh we tried compression calf sleeves that mm-hmm. was just too competitive that was a bad idea mm-hmm. that didn't work out we tried um uh, cards against humanity cases because we, we thought we were in the games cases yeah 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 market for a second that is okay but so so nothing was really working out really well for us. Um, so we were trying other things. Like we were try- trying to figure out what is what is going to work for us? What are we going to do that? And um, so we can actually grow and uh, we, ch- so some other things that we tried, we tried opening a physical retail store. That was stupid. Mm. We, ch- we opened a toy store, a toy and comic store, and obviously didn't work in, in rural Kentucky. Mm-hmm. There you uh, go. Where, I'm, where we're from. Uh, we started a uh, My Little Pony website selling my little pony uh <laughs> products and collectibles because we thought my little po- like it was like right around the time my little pony was getting really popular again yeah we thought okay it's the next pokemon it's gonna yeah. take off yeah. and we will be early adopters and have this website and now and then they'll come out with a my little pony go <laughs> and you'll see like little ar ponies running around the, yeah like, exactly with a little lasso like, yeah i just created a new game yeah sorry carry on i think it's actually right, yeah. days, but. so that didn't work um and then we started dabbling with this thing called wholesale uh okay and like then, the entire like, sale oh. <laughs> now okay but you already hated arbitrage mm-hmm. so why would you dive into wholesale it's the next step up <laughs> 
Well, as you uh, look, I'm not, uh, as it, it should be clear right now, I'm no fear of failure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, I, sure. I actually was thinking to myself, like, wow. You are you are you are working in the future. Yeah. And sometimes the wrong future, but <laughs> you know, that's it's definitely um, ballsy. Yeah. Well, well I'm to, not done with failures yet. I oh, good. You've got more to come. That's but right. no, no, no. To preface, and, and the only reason I say that is, I know that. Um, depending on the release sequence of all of this, because let's be honest, we don't release our podcasts in order of when we shoot them. But we have um, Jason Fladlian, who is going to go over some points in this area as well. So, you know, let's just assume that no one's seen that and we'll we'll just let you take it from there. So yeah, wholesale, right. what? Yeah. So uh, the, the, one of the next things we thought we would try is go to a trade show. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Like this is, see if we can figure out, people make money at trade shows, we'll try that. Uh, so we go to a trade show, and we find there's a brand there that has this good product, um, and you know we scan it with our phones and see, we'll look at the Amazon listing and see, look at the sales rank and see how much it's selling and see how many sellers there are and, and the price and uh, they're you know they're going to sell it to us at a good price where we make a, a pretty comfortable profit and then and it's just like okay uh, we need, and it's the, this is a closeout deal okay. Right. It means that they came to the show with like a limited amount of inventory and they're selling that inventory at this price and then that's it. It's gone okay. and there's no other opportunity to buy. It. So it's kind of cool thing, right? Like mm -hmm. you can just you can buy this inventory, you can buy a bunch of it. Um, oh, this is a, a host a wholesalers trade show? Mm hmm yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Like a yeah, like a wholesalers trade show, yeah. Got it. Uh, so like there's a bunch of brand wholesale. existing brands that are there with their products and they're just trying to get people interested in buying them, right? So cool. Didn't even know so that existed. It was, it was a profitable buy for us. Um, and we bought 2000 units, which was, and it cost a lot of money to buy those 2000 mm -hmm. units of this product. But what we didn't know was that wasn't all of the closeout. Mm. That was all that they had left. Okay. <laughs> Apparently they were, they had sold like another 18,000 units of this product at that show. Mm. Oh boy. Okay. So, so what happened was once we got it, that we received it and shipped it into Amazon. By the time that we had done that, so had all the other people that bought it at that right. trade show on that closeout. Right. So what ended up happening was it nearly bankrupt us. Oh, mm -hmm. Jesus. Because we had bought all this inventory with all these other people. So there was just tons of sellers on the listing and they were all trying to liquidate it. So they had just driven the price down because they yeah. were trying to move inventory. Yeah. Um, and so like, it, it, we just couldn't move it. We had spent all this money on all this inventory and couldn't really move it. Yeah. Now, my partner, Dan, uh, he was able to get us out of a lot of it and trade a lot of that inventory for other inventory and so that we could get our cash flow moving back. But it, that was that's kind of like what traditional wholesale is. It's it's this like tough doing closeouts, working with going to trade shows. It's this risky, weird thing that sucks because everyone has access to do it. Yeah. Like there's no barrier of entry for wholesale, for just regular traditional wholesale because anyone that showed up to that trade show wanted to buy that guy's inventory, his products to resell, even though they were doing well on Amazon at the time, little well, did we know that he was going to flood the market full of inventory. <laughs> right. Uh, so th that it only appeared good and it wasn't oh, going to be good for all the people he sold to. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's kind of the problem. So, uh, that was a, that was another frustrating experience, but ultimately it led us to figuring out how to do business the way that we do now and have had a whole lot of success with. Mm. So, uh, so so I, far wholesale to Dylan zero, private yeah. label one. <laughs> yeah, right. So one day my partner uh, Dan he was just frustrated. He's like, "Why is this so difficult? Why can't we? Why is the only thing that we can make money with seem to be?" going to stupid Walmarts and scanning stuff off a shelf. We just kind of felt like failures and idiots. Yeah. And he's just lamenting about it. And he, he picks up uh, a product uh, off of his desk. Right. And he's like, why isn't it simple? Why can't, it, why, like, why can't I just sell this? You know, you just kind of pick something up off his desk and I just like, why, why I just want to sell this. Why is that so difficult? <laughs> and I uh, put it in the frame here. Yeah, so, yeah. It wasn't actually this, but I'm just, <laughs> yeah. you know, for, for dramatic purposes. Yeah. 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 And then it was kind of like a light bulb moment. He's just like, hmm, uh, let's just try that. So he looks at the on the back of the product where it has their contact information yeah. or whatever, right? And uh, he just 
calls them. It just calls the brand. It calls the actual brand owner, you know, their information on the product. And they answer the phone. And he says, hi, uh, you know, I'm, I have an Amazon retail business. Um, I would just, I, all I wanted to know is who are your wholesalers and distributors? I'd, I'd like to know where I can buy your product, acquire your product. Uh, right. And they say, well, um, we, we have those, we can give you their names and, and information, but, uh, if you, if you would like to just buy, buy direct. direct from us, we can do that. And Dan was like, Judging. like what? <laughs> like buy it direct. And, and then, uh, because up to this point, we thought that that wasn't really possible. Everyone had okay. been t- telling us that to buy direct from brands, um, you know, popular, successful Amazon products, things that were selling, you know, hundred hundreds of thousands of dollars a month or, or a million plus dollars a month on Amazon that like if you were to try to open up a an account to buy direct from them, the minimum orders would be astronomical. You'd right. have to buy, you know, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars worth of product for them to be willing to deal with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we just didn't even bother. We so we were always trying to go through trade shows or wholesalers or distributors that let you buy like way less of a product, but they're a middleman, you know, so they they kind of upcharge a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but they let you buy smaller quantities, but they were like, no, we can open a, can- a direct account with you. So then Dan is like, okay, well, what's your minimum order? Just thinking they're going to say it's something like, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Yeah. And they said $250. <laughs> and it's like, well, what? what? Dan's like, <laughs> I think you left out a comma. I think and a that's couple in my zeros. drawer. <laughs> And, and then we get the price list, right? Cause we're buying direct and we, and we see what they're charging us. And it's just like, holy shit, we're going to make, Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, to, no, no, no. It's fine. To, we uh, all have our big boy I, I pants think, on. <laughs> ho- yeah. Holy crap. And we're going to make like $5 a unit on this or whatever. And it's like, uh, we didn't tell them that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that was our first, what, what we call, what we now call, there's not, I don't know if there's ever really been a name for this, but we call reverse sourcing wholesale account, wholesale Trademark. account where we were, were able to buy, identify a product that was already very successful on Amazon doing very well selling, you know, and th- this product, as I remember it at the time was doing like tens of thousands of dollars in sales every month on Amazon. And we were now able to buy it at a at direct from the manufacturer at a direct price. Right. And if anyone knows anything about Amazon, if you're able to list a product with the, the lowest price, you get all the sales. Yeah. <laughs> buy box um, is yours. And that was, so that was like, and the reason we call that reverse sourcing wholesale is because it's so different than how people typically do wholesale mm-hmm. and, and, and you know what you call like wholesale arbitrage most what what how most people do wholesale is they tr- they find they try to find a wholesaler or a distributor first yeah and see what products those wholesalers or distributors carry and then see if there's are any if they carry anything that would be good or profitable to sell on Amazon that's funny i never even considered that aspect i have always gone direct to the company because this is how yeah my you wife have I, done this you have done this yeah except all the products that we did were not on Amazon already uh, so we what the way we did it was so really long story short 2010 is when we got started I was in a uh, life changing accident we'll call it I was uh, no longer able to travel no longer able to walk blah 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 so I went searching for a way to make money because I was a traveling salesman at the time. And the only way I could think of was online. So I went to um, one company and said, well, let me sell it on Amazon. And, oh, by the way, give it to me on consignment. (laughs) So that, that they did that. And then, and now this is 10 years ago. So this is a long time ago in, in terms of Amazon sales. And so then another company came on and another company came on and we got everything on consignment and just paid them when they sold. But I never even considered and never even knew until just now that there were wholesale trade shows. Of course, I I could easily make the deduction, but I wouldn't even consider going through a middleman myself uh, because of that loss of profit margin. 
Yeah, well, see, the thing, like, the difference there is, so you said those products weren't already listed on Amazon, right? right? Like, you kind of introduce them to the market. So, yes. what I'm talking about with at, at a whole at a trade show or when you contact a wholesaler or distributor, you're looking for products that already are selling well on yeah. Amazon. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big. Yeah, you're not difference. trying to introduce new new products to the market or 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 or, or, or launch things. You just want to sell things that are already doing well. That makes on a lot Amazon. of yeah. I can definitely see that that. That you cut out the, the risk time. factor. Yeah, the too. risk factor, the time factor. You know, at, at the time that we were doing this, we didn't. Well, when we started, there was no advertising on Amazon, and when it first came out, you didn't need to do it to rank. That's a very different story these days. Yeah. But so yeah, you can you can cut out literally months and months in, of of scaling by doing this method, which I, is genius. I'm pretty sure that anyone who's watching this, I'm sure the penny is dropping yeah. at this moment because it's kind of like you're already dealing with something that's got its own brand recognition. Mm -hmm. It's already shown to be effective on Amazon. You basically just need to actually fully understand the process of what they're already doing. Yeah, so that's this is the, the aha moment yeah. for me. Yeah, it's yeah. like... As why? opposed to brand new, yeah, already why? winning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we haven't even really even got into it at all. You've heard wow. nothing. Yeah. I, I'm I'm very sad that we haven't we hadn't met years ago when when we were just starting this. <laughs> you know what? You know what I'm excited for? I'm excited for all the people who are like sitting on the edge of their seat, and then we're gonna end the podcast in 20 minutes, and then they're gonna be sitting there going, but uh, ha. Huh. <sighs> and then I'm gonna, you know, take it over to the MBS side, and then we'll give the yeah. managed by stats subscribers another like ten. We minutes. didn't cover that with you, did we? Yeah, it's fine. We'll, yeah. we'll catch we'll, up we'll, later. We'll, okay. Yeah, this okay, show good. is we, all about surprises. Yeah. But no, go for it. Carry on. Yeah. So right now I'm still talking about the way that it sucks to do wholesale. Yeah. Go to a distributor, <laughs> yeah. go to a wholesaler, or go to a trade show and try to hopefully find something that you can sell profitably. But the, the problem with wholesalers or distributors or trade shows is that anyone can do that. Yeah, and yeah. when any when everyone has access to do that, it ruins the opportunity. Really. Okay. Sure. And, and so, uh, what what we figured out is, well, let's 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 do it differently. Instead of trying to find products through wholesalers or distributors or trade shows, let's try to find products on Amazon. Let's start our search for like, well, let's just go on Amazon and say, I I want to sell this product. It's doing super. It's doing well, or it's doing reasonably well. I want to sell that product. I want to sell that product. And then just try to reach out to the brand directly and see if we can't open a an account direct. Skip sure. the middleman, yep. direct price, okay. direct from the manufacturer, and buy it and try to set up a wholesale account from them. And so that's what we started doing. That's what that first one I was talking about. Yeah. Dan called, and they were act he called just to see who their distributors were, so he could find out where he could buy their product. And they were like, "Hey, we'll sell to you direct." Okay, so that yeah. some success on the first try. Yeah. yeah. So then we so we were like, okay, we're just going to keep trying this again. Let's try another one that's doing well on Amazon and call them, right? Second we, one we call, uh, I think it's going to go the same. And they answer the phone, give them the same deal. You know, hey, I'd like to open up a direct account with you. We're an Amazon seller. And they're just like, yeah, we uh, we don't sell to Amazon sellers anymore. Oh, we're wow. not doing that. We, yeah. Or we had, you know, or, or they would, or we, we, so we call the next one. They'd say, oh, we already have Amazon sellers, not looking to add anymore. Yeah. And we called like seven, eight or nine or 10 more after this. And they all said the same thing. We're not looking to sell to any more Amazon sellers. Hmm. We have, we have Amazon sellers. We're good. We're so, so we found out pretty quickly, started figuring out, we got lucky on the first one. Right. Yeah. Well, um, and, but then we started wondering, like, why are they saying no? Why are they Why are they not wanting to to work with us? What is What is I, the deal with that? I suspect I know the answer. Carry on. Can hey, I well, guess? <laughs> no, let All me right. tell his story. All right, no, go ahead. well, I mean, we had to sit and ponder it, right? We're like, we're trying to give them. I'm literally trying to call. I'm calling someone to try to give them money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're saying, no, thank you. We don't want your money. I, I know what it is. And the reality <laughs> is, so why are the brands doing that, right? Well. Yeah. Um, in their minds, Amazon, like their Amazon sales are kind of this fixed number. Mm. They, they think, you know, they're, I'll just use round numbers for this. Like their product sells a hundred times a month. Had it having six Amazon sellers is no different than having 60 adding Amazon okay. sellers doesn't help them. All it does is just create more complexity for them. They have mm -hmm. more orders to ship out to more people, more accounting to deal with more, like more customer service that has to go on. So in their minds, it's just easier to deal with fewer people. Yeah, they're or, not seeing what you bring to the table. Right. Or yeah. or they or they're thinking like, 
or they've had trouble. They had too many Amazon sellers who were just wreaking havoc on their listings, you know, and caused problems. So they wanted to just have fewer and stuff like that. And the more and more of these calls where they kept rejecting us, another light bulb kind of went off in our head. It was that they, these companies don't know anything about Amazon and they, right. and they've had these, all these negative experiences. Um, and so it's like, how could we convince them uh, to want to work with us and, ha- and convince them that we're different? Sure. And so I'll give you, so this is like where literally everything changed. Like this is this next story I'm going to give you is the pivotal moment for everything. So my, my business partner, he calls this one brand. Um, it's a supplement company. Oh, actually, he emails them first. He sends them an email asking to uh, be able to buy direct, open up a direct account with them, and that we're gonna we'd like to sell their product on Amazon as an authorized seller of their product. And they send an email back that says we're not a- accepting any more Amazon sellers. And, uh, my partner, he says, uh, well, he he just picks up the phone and calls them instead. Like he got that no through email, and he's like, I'm just gonna call them. Mm-hmm. He calls them, and uh, a guy answers the phone and my partner says, yeah, I just got an email back from Bob. I was trying to, to open up a, uh, a direct account with you guys. We're an Amazon seller. I like to sell your, carry your products on Amazon. I just, I just like to, to be able to talk to Bob. And the person on the phone says, well, this is Bob. Mm-hmm. And when I said, we're not accepting any more Amazon sellers, I meant it. Ooh. So like, a <laughs> as hard of a shutdown as <laughs> can be given up to this point. <laughs> Yeah. And, and my partner, Dan, is like, I, I understand that, you know, I, I, this has to be frustrating. People probably call you all the time trying to do this, trying to open up these accounts. Um, but, you know, if you just got a few minutes, man, I'd really like to just uh, show you some things or some ways so that we could help you and work with you if that's okay. And the guy's response is, um, well, I don't know what you can do for me. I actually already work with the two largest Amazon sellers on the platform. I work with River Colony Trading and Etails. Um, and Etails, they've changed their name, but, uh, yeah. to Caspian or something like that. But e- Etails is like a hundred and two hundred million dollar a year Amazon seller and River Colony Trading is definitely a hundred million plus a year Amazon yeah. seller. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and those, those are two of the people that were carrying his product. So in his mind, he had the two best sellers in the world. Mm. What could they possibly do to help him? And my business partner says this to him. He says, um, who, who is your, your biggest or, or actually what he said to him was, can you go to your Amazon listing for me? Pull it up real fast. And the guy says, okay, yeah, I'm there. I'm looking at it. Uh, he's like, he's like, okay, cool. He's like, have you now, now what, I, now what I want you to do is pull up another tab and I want you to search up this brand. Have you heard of them? He said, yep. Uh, they're one of our competitors. And my, my partner <laughs> says, um, okay. And in physical retail stores, right. How do you, how do they compete with you? Like, how, what's their market share versus your market share? Oh, we dominate them, he says. So, like, they're basically nobodies. Uh, they're kind of a new startup kind of people. They're nothing, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, Dan's like, okay, all right. So I want you to search search them up, pull up their Amazon listing real quick. And the guy does that, and he goes, you know, he says, like, he, expletive. Mm-hmm. He, he, he says, <laughs> shit. When he sees their Amazon listing. And so what my partner has done it, it, now he's got him comparing his Amazon listing versus right. his competitor's Amazon and yeah. listing. Yeah. And they're night and day. The, their Amazon listing is trash, and this competitor's is fantastic. Wow. Yeah. All these great photos, infographics, uh, lifestyle shots on the on the, on the the listing, great copy, uh, you know, like the A-plus kind of branded content yeah. and the description. Mm-hmm. Has more reviews than him, better reviews. Um, and this was this, like, he's, he's, he's starting to get it now. Yeah. And so Dan's explaining it to him. Like, now here's the pivotal part about this. I want you to scroll down and he shows him the sales rank and he explains, he's like, these guys are selling out selling you on Amazon three to one. Jesus. And the dude is basically furious at this point. Right. Like he's frustrated. Which you know. is perfect for yeah, you yeah, guys. Yeah. Cause he's exactly. like, I'm going to fire these a, you know, holes. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, he just a he's, holes. He's, <laughs> yeah, and he. So my partner Dan is just like, look, man. You know, you're working with Etails, you're working with River Colony Trading, and they are two of the largest sellers on Amazon. And you, what you said earlier was correct. 
that there's nothing that I can do for you that they can't do for you, but they aren't doing it. Right. For you, to you, like, you're just account 700 for them. Right. Mm-hmm. For, for us, you would be account number two. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would, it'd be the highest priority and we can go in and, and fix all this stuff. We can get you, you get your listing converting better, uh, out there more. We can start running ads for you, which you're not doing right now, uh, getting you more, more sales, more customers, more returning customers and really blow your brand up, um, and kind of erase this embarrassment that, you know, where your competitor <laughs> here is just crushing you. And yeah. the guy's like, you know what? Uh, yes. Uh, uh you know, I would, I'd love so, to, be able to work with you guys. Cool. And so he, he, he gave us the account, right? He, he let us open up that direct account and buy direct from them. Mm-hmm. And we were just one of three sellers because there's a, the other two and us, but we got a better, he gave us a better price than them. Hmm. Um, and that account, that was a mul- like that brand does multiple millions of dollars a year on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are, you know, effectively, the ex- we were from day one, we were effectively the exclusive seller mm-hmm. of the product. Wow. Genius. And, it, and uh, that's that was the moment. Like once we had that success, that breakthrough, it was like we can just keep repeating this. Yeah. Because 100%. here's the reality: is if, you, if anyone's ever spent any time on Amazon, there are hundreds of thousands of branded products with garbage listings. With garbage listings. Garbage. Just yeah. Complete trash. Yeah. Um, that still sell pretty well. Yeah. Like we're talking. Mm-hmm. Complete garbage trash listings of a product that <laughs> the product will still do a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales per month, or they'll have a bunch of different SKUs and combined it does that much or whatever you know. And those 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 brands, those products, they already exist. They're selling well on these decent on Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Because people know who, what that product is, they know that brand, they yes. recognize that brand, they're comfortable wow. with that brand. <clears throat> but if those listings were good. They'd actually show up in the search results, right? If those listings were good, yeah. they'd, be, they'd be totally crushing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and and then the thing is that these brands, the way that it works is, uh, like, ultimately, and I can I can give more examples, and I, I don't even care to share brands that we work with. So that we we do continue to just use that strategy of identify products and brands that were doing well but could be served and we could help, open up a conversation with them, um, and keep landing those accounts. And here's the thing. It's like when someone approves you as one of their authorized Amazon sellers, maybe you're one of four or one of five or whatever, if you serve them and do a good job, well, then they'll make you the exclusive seller, right? You can negotiate right. to become the exclusive seller and you go yep. under contract for that, right? Yep. And then when you, once you go under contract with a brand to be their exclusive seller, your bed that, contra- that yeah. contract is valuable. Yeah. You now have an, a business asset yeah. right. because it's guaranteed. It's basically guaranteed money and sales and profit for yes. the lifetime of that contract. Right. Out of the bank. So like, um, so now we have all these assets and these brand and these contracts that we've signed with brands for, for us to be their exclusive Amazon seller, their exclusive Amazon partner. Dude, I am um, loving what you're saying. This is and awesome. That keeps, yeah. And that keeps on evolving too, because like, with some of our brands, we've even worked to do exactly what you were talking about earlier to mm-hmm. even sell our product on consignment, where now we don't even, for some of our brands, we don't even pay for the inventory. Yeah. Wow. They just let us manage their Amazon presence. Yeah. And we get paid a sale. We, we get paid a percentage of every sale. Sure. Yeah. That, that happens, right? It's yep. like, so you don't even have to be invested any financial money up front yeah, to be just able this- to, to just make tons of money uh, working with these brands. Yeah. It's just a bit of sweat equity. And then, but you've got that so down that it's hardly, hardly an uh, extensive amount of effort to do that. So that's, yeah. I love it. You're gonna, yeah. And well, that, that's, what's cool about like all the people that are watching, if you do private label or whatever, you, you have you already all the skills. Have the tools. Yeah. Yeah. You have the skills, like, you know, how to, to make products decent on Amazon. Yeah. There's tons of brands that need your help. What you, all you need to know is how to identify what is a good opportunity um, and to be able to know what are the things that you need to say and do. Um, Got to go help move that <laughs> fridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and I, you got to know the things that you need to say to do and do to, uh, turn off the iPad. To, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Turn off an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Siri, turn off. Yeah. I can't do yeah, that. Sorry Dave. about that. Yes. <laughs> no, don't uh, worry about it. But yeah, I mean, and th- we just c- continued to scale and grow with that. Add more lines. Um, we're now it. done over thirty million dollars in sales 
That's with awesome. Amazon. And we have some exclusive accounts that generate literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit um, every year Yeah, um, doing that. That's brilliant. Wow. I, I love it. So um, this is this is the, the interesting part because we basically are out of time on YouTube. So here's kind of how we do this. We have you on for the broad public. Anyone can see this stuff. Um, anyone on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then at a certain point, we cut it off for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Jump for on over. Public. Yeah, for the general public. Jump on over to our private Facebook group and basically put some juicy, juicy, juicy nuggets over there for only managed by stats. So what we're gonna do is what we always do with many antics and basically end off for YouTube because you know, we do love you guys and everything, um, but you know, we- Cut right there. <laughs> No, we're not cutting right there because we needed to, you know, obviously. So we're going to put in the link in the description um, how you can, because yeah. Dylan, obviously you guys got wise to the fact that you've obviously got something that's great, not just for you guys as sellers, but there's so such an unlimited number of brands. There's no harm in opening this up to other people to kind of understand what you guys have going on. So I know that there's a webinar on the 18th. Oh. You guys have a three part webinar. So I know the first one's on the 18th of this month, and then I think 22nd, I don't remember what the dates are after that, but it's kind of irrelevant, but you'll, you'll, you'll get tons of emails it's on. For the record, it's February 2021. Yeah, 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 February. Yeah. <laughs> With two, one. February 2021, the 18th. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Um, and um, Who? we'll, <laughs> Justin, we'll, we'll basically give everyone in the description of this video a link to hop on over there. Yep. So we'll we'll do all that on, on the description of this, but then what we want you guys to do, if you're Managed by Sat subscribers, jump on over to the Facebook user group. If you're not a subscriber, I don't know what you're thinking, frankly, because it kind of sounds like what Dylan's even gonna tell you is I, worth I, the cost I actually of know what they're thinking. They're thinking how, how I'm thinking, listening to what he did, going, God, I could have done that a decade ago. Yeah, literally, right? <laughs> um, so what we'll do is, for anyone who's watching here on YouTube, Apple Podcast. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, um, Dylan. You're a you're a legend among men. <laughs> um, you're and we'll, a man we'll, a lot <laughs> among legends. Uh, no, I'll take your no, 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 that's it. backwards. I would go with mine. All but right. either way, um, give us a five star uh, review um, because we can say that here. We can't say it on Amazon, but hey, we're not on Amazon. So um, like, share. Um, Subscribe. Send this far and wide because I'm sure you know 10 people that um, need to know about this topic, right? There's probably a lot of people out there that just with what have heard here, what they've had heard, an yeah, aha yeah. moment oh, yeah, fully. And, and can get started. But because there's the there's the people who don't have any Amazon presence that find they need to learn everything. Mm -hmm. But then there's all the guys who are private yeah. labeled that maybe want to diversify yeah. outside of just yeah. their own brand. Definitely. So um, for everyone on YouTube. Bye bye, sayonara. For everyone on Managed by Stats, we will see you over in the Facebook user group. Dink. Dylan, thank you so much for uh, the time here, and we'll hop on over. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, right. perfect. Adios. Boop.